So hi, in this video we will uh, continue with some uh, DC-DC converter topologies and I strongly advise you to go back to our uh, previous videos and have a, a review of what we did in the first semester before continuing with the with this video. Okay, so the converter that we will uh, discuss is invented by uh, this guy and luckily you know he is still alive and he's his name is Slobodanchuk and actually you can uh, find his uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, he has still an active career, you know, organizing some workshops and tutorials. So that uh, topology is invented by uh, him and it is uh, named as the Chuk converter. Okay, so, you know, before getting into details of the, of the converter, uh, let's have a look at the general picture. So here we have the input voltage and we have the output here and we have a single switch here a single diode so which was uh, common with the other uh, DC DC converters but the interesting thing is like in a normal uh, buck or boost converter we have a single inductor and a single capacitor you know apart from the other filter capacitors but in this case we have actually two inductors on both sides and we have uh, two capacitors and actually again that one is to supply uh, the load so that is the link between the input and output okay and again you know we will uh, we will drive it mathematically but its output the output of the chip converter is actually negative so if you have ground here so you will have a negative voltage okay so it supplies a negative voltage and it has reduced EMI and bidirectional power flow. Again, we will uh, talk about that one. But if you look at the inductor on the source side, actually it regulates the current drawn from the source side. So actually you don't have sharp and like on and off currents, but instead a smoother input current. And similarly, having an L and C at the output, uh, again, uh, your switch is not directly reflected on the output. So all, you know, the EMI or switching harmonics uh, caused by that transistor or that diode is, you know, uh, limited by those inductors. So it is, you know, it is uh, good in terms of the power quality or the EMI uh, considerations. And here, I mean, apart from other topologies, usually we have the inductor as the main uh, source element between the input and output. But here uh, we have the capacitor C1 as the primary energy storage and we will we will show it and it needs to be quite large in order to have a constant voltage and also its voltage rating has to be you know larger than the input and output voltage as we will show okay so let's start with the uh, plotting the on 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 and off states okay so whenever we close that switch you know before continuing on that one so we have the inductor is charged through the input voltage so in, in that way it seems like a, a boost converter so first uh, you are charging your uh, uh, inductor and then again whenever it is on so you have that loop you know coming on that direction so whenever uh, you are uh, turning on the switch L1 is charging and again that current is adding up and is coming on here. I will show more uh, schematics but uh, just to have an idea. So again whenever you close that switch now that inductor is charged with IL1 and it was being charged with that one and it has nowhere to go and it goes like that right and then that inductor is still carrying current in that direction because our like uh, output voltage is like negative like that and there's some current flowing here and in this case they are like flowing in that direction okay so first they were flowing in pairs through transistor then the both inductor currents are flowing together through uh, diode D anyway so let's move on and look at the details again uh, this is the on state so we have the uh, inductor L1 is coming like that and L2 is flowing in that direction. 
and you can say here like L1 is uh, charging with VD and again you can uh, quickly uh, drive that the inductor current is going up in this case, right? What about IL2? It is not as straight as, uh, is, is not as, straight as the L1. So let's go to uh, previous slide and let's have a look at the, you know, the voltage of VC1 and our output voltage, right? So let me uh, clean up that part as well. So again, if you look at here, I mean, what we know, again, you can show it like uh, mathematically, we will prove it later on. But what we know is on average, okay, on average, I'm not talking about instantaneous values, but the average values, VL1 uh, should be zero because on average, if it is higher than that thing, then the current keeps going up and on, up and up, and then it will uh, go to infinity. And the same thing as valid for uh, VL2. This was the voltage seconds rule, okay, in the steady state and on average, the voltage uh, capacitor of the, sorry, the voltage of the inductor L1 and L2 should be zero. Then on average, I can write a relation between VD1, VC1, and our output voltage, right? So let's uh, write that one. So now, again, I am assuming like C1 is large enough, so VC1 is not uh, changing that much. So I can write a Kirchhoff voltage uh, law here, or you can write VC1, okay, is equal to, okay, it is VD minus minus VO, or you can say minus VD plus VC1 minus VO, they are equal to zero. They are the same thing, so you can write VC1 is equal to VD plus VO. And again, I assume a negative voltage and we will prove it later on. So that has some uh, important outputs. So you can say here, you know, VC1 is actually larger than uh, VD and actually VC1 is larger than uh, VO. So uh, by this case, uh, you can say again, like kind of uh, disadvantage, let's say, I don't know, uh, if your input voltage is 30 volts and if your uh, output voltage, I don't know, 15 volts, so the capacitor voltage should be around the sum of these two, okay? So it should be around 45 volts and it's not even counting the ripple currents or uh, the voltages caused by the ripple currents. So basically this is like one of the uh, disadvantages. Anyway, but at the end of the day, I know the VC1 is larger than output voltage, okay? So I can use, I can use uh, that thing, okay? smaller so I can use that thing like if my VC1 is magnitude wise is larger than my VO okay so actually it is as if like you connected a voltage source here and again another voltage source here they are connected in series and it it is going to cause like VC1 so let me write for L2 okay so you will have VC1 plus VO voltage. So you have two voltages like causing L2 to charge as well. Okay, so this is I L1, this is I L2, and it will cause them to charge. Okay, so during on time, both you are charging the inductor and you are also charging the inductance number two. Okay, so again, I think, uh, again, you know, you, you can also conclude that if the current is flowing in that direction, so you are uh, actually, or you can think like that, or the capacitor charge is giving away, so actually C1 is discharging, so basically what you are doing is you are charging the L1 by input voltage and you are charging the L2 
by using the voltage using C1. So, you know, the energy in the inductance 2 increases, but the energy in the VC1 is reducing because it is being uh, discharged. Okay, so let's go to the off state again. Go back and in the off state, okay, so this is off in the off state. So you will have that current and you will have this current, right? So this is the off state. So now the currents of IL1 and IL2 are added up and they are flowing through that uh, diode. So let's have a look at uh, that state. So now, so now I have the first loop for IL1 through here and I have the second loop in this direction. Okay, so remember in the first slide I'd write like VC1 is larger than VD, right? So if you look at the voltages, so our inductance is coupled between these two voltage sources, but actually VC1 is larger than VD1, so you can derive like VL1 uh, is equal to VD minus VC1 and this is negative so IL1 decreases okay so in the first uh, let me draw it here so let's say this is uh, VL1 and whenever it is on you had the VD voltage right then you have a negative voltage and that is VD minus VC1 and as a result what you will have let me uh, draw the axis through here what you will see is first you will this was the on state and this is the off state and you are charging the inductor in the first stage and again you are now uh, discharging that one right so again you know I will I will write the uh, all equations uh, in a couple of slides but I want you to understand like what is happening during that time so anyway get me a red of myself so let's look at the situation for uh, L2 so again it is as if like if the inductor current is like that and like we have a positive voltage in that direction so it will again oppose I mean the current is still flowing in that direction but if you look at the uh, VL2 voltage okay it is minus VO okay so IL2 is also decreasing okay so again uh, if you let me draw everything again so in the first slide it was like again uh, some voltage so now it was minus VO okay and again if we go back in the on state uh, our capacitor voltage actually it was you know VC1 plus VO right is VC1 plus VO anyway so if you look at the IL2 this is VL2 in the first again this is on and this is off and in the second off region again it is discharging so the idea is whenever let me go back uh, so you close the switch okay you close the switch you charge the inductor and actually that capacitor charges the inductor but itself the capacitor itself is discharging whenever the switch is on and whenever the switch is off so now you are using the charge inductor current to supply the capacitor and the load and you are using the 
inductor current which was charged the cycle before by the input voltage to charge the capacitor so the energy flow is something like that you are charging the inductor and that inductor is charging the capacitor and that capacitor is charging the uh, that inductor and that inductor is supplying the output uh, capacitor so it's like, like instead of you know two regions it is like uh, four regions uh, working in an interleaved uh, sequence okay so anyway so let's uh, try to uh, derive all those things and these are you know the uh, actual waveforms again in the first region I mean we started with the own region so it was the VD and then it was VD minus VC1 that was equal to VO and VL2 was first is equal to VC1 minus VO and it was uh, minus VO later on. Right. I think in the previous slides I said like it was uh, VC1 pl plus VO but actually if you check the uh, polarities it should be VC1 minus VO but again uh, we derived like VC1 is larger than VO so that is why we still have uh, positive voltage and it is uh, charging it's charging the uh, inductor during the on cycle okay so let's again if you have those voltages then you have that kind of currents again don't get confused so this is the on state and this is the off state right so let me try to write all those things together if you get an understanding of the topology I will uh, write all the equations and try to uh, obtain the input and output voltage characteristics okay so let me write the equations uh, for the L1 first okay and again I know you know that area and that area should cancel each other under the steady state voltage second balance and I will use again the same equations so let's write the equations for the inductor voltage of the first uh, first inductor so I can write the first one is VD times okay is on period D time TS okay plus and that one it is VD minus VC1 okay let me write in the long term VD uh, minus VC1 okay times 1 minus D TS is equal to 0 okay let me write that on the long version VD minus VC1 uh, minus D VD let's get rid of the TS plus uh, D VC1 this is equal to 0 and as you can see like we can get rid of that one and that one so I have that equation so I can write the C1 capacitor voltage uh, as VD divided by 1 minus D Right. okay so let me write that one here okay so then let's write it for the L2 again you know we can make these two areas uh, cancel each other so at first I have uh, VC1 minus VO times D TS okay uh, plus it is minus VO times 1 minus D TS is equal to 0 so let's get rid of the TS and you can write VC1 times D minus VOD minus VO plus VOD is equal to 0 and again you can see these two cancel each other and I can have like VC1 is equal VO divided by D so again uh, we have some uh, nice equations so we have the same parameter but one of them is uh, written in terms of the input voltage because basically if you just uh, go back and have a look at there's a balance between 
that inductor and uh, that capacitor and the voltage so it is like one converter and there's another relation in the second band and the second equations uh, shows us the relation between the capacitor voltage and the output voltage so actually I can you know combine these two equations and I can write uh, VD divided by 1 minus D is equal to VO divided by D and once you put that V out is equal to D time 1 minus D times VD okay so actually uh, if you remember that one it is a back boost converter okay so it is the same as the you know back boost converter so it can be operated okay it can be operated uh, both as a depending on your duty cycle as a back converter or boost converter but the output voltage is negative so it is a inverting uh, back boost uh, converter to converter okay so again that's how we derive the equations actually if you check the uh, hard tech textbook there's a, a simpler version uh, for that derivation using the power flow you know conserving the energy drawn from the source and the energy taken from the output uh, you can derive the same equations probably in a simpler manner so i i advise you to check uh, that derivation in the textbook of hearts okay so uh, let's look at the advantages of the chuck converter and again if you look at the buck converter boost converter or inverting buck boost converter topology so we have like the inductance here in a normal uh, buck converter so what's happening is whenever i'm talking about let's say the input current okay so if you have a look at the i input for that one so whenever uh, you are switch is off you are not taking any current and whenever it is connected it is drawing some current so the waveform is like that okay so depending on the DCM or CCM modes but anyway so whenever it is on and off so there are some regions where you are not taking any current from the source and there are some you know instantaneous current rise so that kind of sharp rises are you know the maybe the primary uh, reason for EMIs and that kind of problems and if you look at the, the buck uh, sorry boost converter so in the boost converter due to we have some inductance here so in this case yes our input current input current if you look at the, the same ways whenever you are charging the inductor it's going up and it's going down so from the input current point of view uh, it is more friendly or creating less emi or it is better for your input source because you are yes there are some ripple but you are more or less drawing some uh, constant power not on and off powers okay but however if you look at you know the id current here okay the id current here again you have like that kind of characteristics okay so whenever the switch is on so you have zero current and whenever the switch is off the inductor current is coming on again in your topology you have some you know sharp edges and in terms of id or if there's some parasitic inductance here you know it can cause some uh, voltage oscillations or EMIs again it is it is the same thing uh, for the buck boost converter so because of that switch here so it is like a buck converter whenever it is off so you are not drawing any current uh, from the input so that's the good thing about the chip converter so you have the inductor here and you have the inductor there so actually if you look at the input current again you know we derived that one so input current is like that so it is yes it has some uh, ripples 
but it never uh, comes down to zero again if you look at that current or the current supplying the capacitor okay the IL2 current IL2 current is again uh, the same way like that again it is some uh, continuous current okay so that's the main reason why you know chip converter is like a better option if your EMI is EMI issues are uh, important or if you want to draw some uh, continuous current uh, from your input source okay so again this is uh, one advantage and it's like more ripple free I mean by ripple I don't mean it's like going up and down I mean like sharp edges okay so it has like lower uh, filtering requirements and it is it's working like more or less a constant source current okay you are drawing more or less constant current from your load so that's a good thing okay so disadvantages on the other side is c1 uh, has to be quite big because you are charging il1 and il2 through uh, the c1 and both uh, voltage rating and also the capacitance uh, needs to be slightly larger compared to other topologies okay so again since you are having like uh, inductor current directly on the capacitor it's current rating capacitor not rms current rating capacitor as well but also the ripple current uh, rating should be high and sometimes you know they say uh, you know the control uh, can be complex yes actually it is like a you know it's not like second order but it's like a fourth order circuit because you have two inductors and two capacitors but again there are some you know integrated uh, circuits dealing with that one again I mean, for those uh, interested students you can uh, check that link uh, by the Slobodan uh, Chuk himself okay and actually I would like to show you a you know practical product so it is from I think Texas Instruments so you have LM2611 uh, so you can check the data sheet and I strongly advise you to have a look at the layout and that kind of things so this is the you know typical uh, application suggested application uh, for that converter so again you can see L1 you can see L2 you can see the main capacitor here so this is some filter capacitor for the output again they prefer to put some uh, input capacitance in order to again prevent any oscillations moving forward in that direction anyway so you have the controller itself here that controller has an embedded switch and it is shown by uh, that pin so that is connected through here okay and you need to connect connect an external diode through that direction and again there's some uh, sources for the controller itself and again all that things are remember this is taking a um, feedback from the output so there's a voltage voltage division circuit and you are taking some uh, feedback through here again just the resistance div division may be enough but it is preferred to put a RC filter like a, to filter out high oscillations so in order to I think and better control uh, your circuit okay again if you look at the data sheets they will talk about how to calculate those values and how to choose those parameters depending on your operating uh, ranges and there's also like a, a evaluation board like a demo board again just by looking you know in that topologies I want you to be get you know familiar with the components actually uh, you can see like uh, to inductors and this is the main uh, capacitor connecting two sides and this is our controller it's a really small integrated circuit that's the diode for that system and you have the other input capacitor output capacitor and other bypass capacitor and these are the uh, feedback uh, resistances and the capacitor of the feedback loop okay so okay that's all uh, for the chip converter please have a look at the uh, derivations itself in the textbook and also try to solve an FEV examples and also I will solve a couple of exercises in the following videos okay thank you